and, and on um, Instagram. I hope you're not laughing at us, but uh, we're all human beings, you know, um, as we get posted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and uh, thank you for coming on to another session of The Late One um, with the Doctors. And I'm joined by Mr. David Burton, ophthalmologist and, and um, senior gentleman in the NHS. Uh, tonight is about a, a review of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Um, statement which he made to the nation tonight on COVID-19 as to unlocking the lockdown. Many people believe that this was a process of unlocking the lockdown. Um, it, it has been somewhat, the Prime Minister or the team has been criticised in a way because people were saying that, that there was a sort of expectation that people believe that it was unlocking the lockdown where people are starting to get a bit relaxed. I saw my uh, what, what should I say? My 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 car wash opened, right? Just like normal. Went to the um the what do you call it? The, the meat shop. Everybody was actually there. No social distancing. I think I was the only one with mask and actually pulling myself away. Saw the park recently. Mm -hmm. Walk. Well, well, I was in the park. Drove past. People are all going about their business, right? But now the, this statement has been made and it is not actually really um, saying that. David, um, welcome again and thank you for coming on. Earlier we were, we were talking and uh, practicing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what's your take on today, the Prime Minister? Yeah, so first first of all, I should have said really, like really, happy Mother's Day to, um, to yes. those out there. Um, obviously that's the celebration of today. It's a bit different to, to, to years gone by. Um, in regards to what's going on, um, so you know, it was fresh off the fresh off the boat really in terms of uh or fresh off the press in regards to sort of the information that we received yes. um, we're going uh transitioning from a stay at home to stay alert yes. um, in regards to how we um potentially move out of the lockdown i think there are a lot of interesting points um for discussion and quite obviously we'll get better clarity um once boris johnson presents um to the houses of parliament um uh, in in due course um but I think there's some key key points here. Um, first, the reiteration of the five key pillars uh, upon which we um, will attempt to unlock further um, from current predicaments. Um, and we've, we've, we've been aware of, of those key pillars, but just to refresh, um, once we've sufficiently got um, enough capacity in the NHS, which we do have, um, then then that's one of the pillars. The other two pillars really are quite, quite nicely linked. And that's a sustained and consistent fall in the number of deaths, daily deaths, and also controlling of the rate of infection. So that's the R number that you will have all heard about. And then testing capacity in the PPE, yes. you know, PPE I hold dear to my heart uh, and also my head. Um, and so we've got to get make sure we have enough to meet the demand that's required. And then the last thing is um, quite obviously we don't want to risk a second peak. Um, so we've got to do everything we can to, to reduce that chance. So that was the first part of the discussion. And the, the other interesting part yes. I think relates to um, the alert levels. So much like there's a, a terror alert level um, for the UK and other countries um, have alert levels, we're having a health COVID alert level um, from one yes. to five. Um, and the other uh, caveat to that is that there seems to be regional um, sort of feedback in, in, in that regard and I think that's sensible because we all know that different parts of the UK have been hit um, uh, disproportionately um, and so to have that regional um, appreciation of the fact that our numbers will vary um, in different yes. areas is, is key and essential to how again we conduct ourselves going going down the line so th those that was probably the biggest take I, I got from from this and that we're trying really to establish um how how much uh, we're affected in the different regions within the uk itself and obviously yeah. the information today relates to to england um that, or much of the information relates to england itself yeah um and and and, and for one of the things which he talked about he, he set out a sort of structure um can more people go back to work you know uh mm. and he said from monday uh people in england can't work who can't work from home will be actively encouraged to go to work but they should still avoid public transport if possible because of social distancing and the government says it's working on guidance for employers to make workplace covid secure think about that for a second um from monday people in england who can't work from home will be actively encouraged to go to work for 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 what we have known uh, people have been encouraged to work from home or go on furlough. Do you think it's because the government is actually run out of money as well? 
Well, that's a that's a that's a tricky one. I, in terms of money, um, who who knows? Sure, I, yeah. think, I think mm. the, the thing for me is making sure the workplaces are safe. Um, yes. And how how we reach that is obviously dependent on employers um, and the feedback they're going to get from Public Health England as well as local authorities. So mm. we need to make sure that people are safe when going back to 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 the to their respective workplaces. And again, that's that information has really got to come um from from a directive of the government um yes. with regards to how they're gonna effectively keep people safe at at work um uh going down the line you know, what does that mean um i think it's quite wise to obviously for people to be aware of what they should do as well in order to feel, feel safe um in, in getting to work and obviously if they can avoid public transportation as well so and um, that comes back to again having adequate forms of 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 face protection um, and yes. traveling in in in, 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 in the community, um, uh, so so that that's something that, that they may well consider sort of issuing that kind of uh, advisory. Um, mm. But we'll see. So did, did you pick up from that statement as to the unlocking of the lockdown? Is as it damned the persons who are actually saying, "Yeah, we're going to be unlocked. The lockdown is going to be unlocked." Well, this is the thing. Yeah. This is the thing. Yeah. There are going to be uh, camps that think that the, the, the locking, unlocking a little bit too quickly, and there are going to be camps that think we need to really lock down even more than we currently are. Um, I think with this one, it's, it's it's kind of a happy medium in between the two. But with that, um, there, there's obviously the the thought that that it may well he may well have not gone far in regards to giving us clear indications and plans, but. I think you know from a from a 15 10 to 15 minute statement to, to grasp onto the information from that is very very difficult um so it, it was insightful um it raises lots of questions and we have a, a clearer understanding i think um of how the how we're transitioning from um current uh, stay-at-home orders to um to to being more alert um, and that with time i think we'll get more information as to how that will um tra- how those ideas will transpire um, and so we've just got to give it time. We've got to listen to to, to what is being said and then act accordingly. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the reflection here is that, you know, the, there's the idea that schools will be back in, in working order after people are, are, are allowed to go back to work in safe conditions. And obviously, if from a school point of view, we really yes. need to be um, making sure that schools feel safe with the with the with, with the with, with, with the expectation of children going back to school and obviously that parents feel safe taking their kids to school as well so that like, yeah. again it would be nice to hear how that's going to be achieved or how what the expectation is and because we're we're operating at a, a, a play, from a place where most people understandably are quite fearful of yes. the current situation and so just to expect people to go back into into working conditions um uh, and and you know, going back to the normality mm. of of how things were pre-COVID, um, I think is an kind of expectation to 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 have that um, be delivered um, in a, in a short fashion, and for us to be able to yeah. sort of get to grips with that in a very short fashion. So um, yeah. that's that's where I see things going, and I think laying that 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 blueprint today um, has helped in some way to to sort of um give a clear understanding but there's there's there are, there are obviously there is obviously a need to 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 to, to explore that a lot uh, in, a, in a greater fashion and and you believe of course what it did it 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 sort of shaped the mind of people so people can sort of focus and have a, a clear sense of direction because for a few weeks now of course when the prime minister um was not well um it was felt that there was a lack of clarity, a lack of direction for the country, and people were really going at the, the foot soldiers that was there. Now we are seeing some level of order whereby when will schools and universities return? Mr. Johnson, the primary schools in England may be ready to reopen in stages, but not until 1st of July at earliest. This could begin with reception year one and year six, people going back. The Prime Minister says also, if the government ambition to give secondary school people doing, doing exams next year, at least some time with their teachers before the summer holidays. The school zone, what is the tricky thing about the school zone and young children and people wanting school to open back? Do you see any danger there, especially with young children who are deemed not to show symptoms 
but are actually carriers. And then you've got the teachers there. And what they're saying today is that it is really difficult to have social distancing with children. Yeah, and that's and that's why I say there's got to be a clearer understanding as to how the safety element of all of this is, is going to um, come to fruition. And, yeah. and I think we'll hear more in the next couple of days, weeks, um, of, of how, how, how this may well take, take shape. The other thing to bear in mind of all of this is condition, conditioned upon the fact that um, the alert levels have to be within the acceptable range. And that alert level is depending on a lot of factors, including the R value. So, um, it, it, you know, we can we can hash out and, and speculate how, how schools are going to reopen. I think one of the things that the UK um, as a whole has um, in this whole unfortunate situation is that we are behind other countries who have open schools, um, who yeah. have um, opened their workplaces um, and are trying to get people back to work. So we can, we can actually learn from their experiences somewhat um, yes. and, and, and take that going, going forward. So if ever there's a silver lining, which there are not very many silver linings when it comes to COVID, this is one of them that we can learn from the experiences of other countries when embarking on, um, on these projects. Before, before I touch on the other bits, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming on. And of course, I'm with Dr. Um, David Bird, ophthalmologist. And um, we're looking at the reviewing of the recent statement by the Prime Minister. You mentioned a while ago looking at um, best practices or experiences of different nations. We just heard that Germany is actually um, having some more increase in coronavirus. We heard about Korea, whereby someone went into some clubs and um, the, the lockdown goes. Do you sense that the people are being, it's like it could start all over again if we're not careful? I remember, we, we've got to fall back to those um, five, five pillars um, yes. in terms of how we go about things. And we can minimize the risk of, of, of certain events taking place, but there are other things that are going to be outside of control. And so um, taking careers, for example, they've, they've obviously... Um, got the contract tracers um, on board in relation to trying to track and trace these patients, uh, these people who may have come, come, to, come into contact. This is reported, obviously, um, yeah. um, uh, come into contact with a person who is spreading the virus. So um, contract tracing really does help, and that's why um, I think it's a really good standard for us to try and achieve um, not only the target of the 18,000, but also above and beyond that if needs, if needs required. Um, in regards to Germany, I think that you know the data coming out is quite a short period of time, um, and, yes. and with these things, whilst we want the information now, you know, the information in regards to infection, now in regards um, how we treat and tell patients who've got COVID and prevent death. Um, unfortunately, what what has to transpire is that time will give us more information, um, and I don't know if you mm. recall, but a few a few weeks ago there was another query that there was a spike in the R value in Germany and that, that didn't really come to fruition mm -hmm. and it didn't stop the transition um, for them currently. So let's just watch the space um, let's pay attention to all the information that we have and then, and then act accordingly. Um, well, some are saying it's, helps. well, some are saying it's confusing as it now seems yeah. to put the decision on individuals to go to work or not. That's what um, someone Most just said. I, I can see how the confusion is there because um, you, you get a little segue, a seg, seg, segue of information with, with, without any real context. Um, and so, you know, we don't know whether workplaces have been set up. There's going to obviously be some workplaces who have done the groundwork and preparation and there are some others that haven't. And that's the complexity mm. of all of this. And that's why I say we've really got to think about uh, the time here, um, think about how safe the workplaces are, what employers can do to obviously make sure they, they mitigate some of the risk. Um, uh, and employees can also do to try and reduce the chance of spreading any infection. So all of these things will come to, um, will, will be, will I'm sure come out because th th every workplace will have to have a set of rules and regulations as to, yes. to try and reduce the chance of, of spread of infection. But I think yeah. I, you know, this, this is the starting point. The timing of which you could you could argue, um, but I think at least we've got a starting point and we work forward yeah. from it. One of the next steps we mentioned was that uh, people to be able to exercise more. Mm -hmm. um, from Wednesday, people in England will be able to spend more time outdoors for legal purposes. 
um, they can take more even unlimited amount of outdoor exercise rather than only exercising once a day. I didn't know that. I was walking around some time, like three times. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe, yeah, that's, yeah, the maybe, maybe, maybe that's why when I saw the police car and I was walking, I, I kept doing that little stretch like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was saying, oh, let's go. We saw him before. And they're able to play sports, although what types are not specified, but social distancing rules must apply. Now, the bit about the social distancing rule, what I said, if those minor minority of persons who are flaunting that, they're going to raise the fine and get a bit more serious on that as well. Mm. So the, the thing to mention yeah. there is that the, 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 the outdoor exercise is still within the your family circle, so within yeah. your household. So um, you, you can't go and, uh, from what I understand from what that, you can't go and play five-a-side football with your friends that you used, you know, used to do on a Wednesday uh, evening or whatever. What, what, was, what, what's, what I take from it is that um, you can go out of the house more, you can exercise as long as you want to now, go for mm. long runs if you want, um, go to the park, but within your own social circus, cir uh, so social circle, uh, sorry, household circle, sorry, um, and um, maintain this social distancing is what I meant to say there, um, because that's that's key and essential to, to again, keeping the, the R number down. Yeah, that, 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 that's very interesting. I'm, I'm going to bring in... Um, um, Anthony Francis, right? I'm going to bring in Anthony Francis to give his, his perspective because Anthony is saying um, he's, he's critical of the way how the government has been handling it. Of course, many persons, Pierce Morgan and the, and the full, you know, full Shaban. And um, I'm going to see if Anthony can join us briefly on this point. But before, before that, let us look at um, another point where he said, how will the virus threat be pub publicized, you know? COVID alert system with a level of danger rated one to five, five being the most critical will be introduced, Mr. Johnson said. This will determine how tough social distancing measures need to be. The lower the number, they'll be relaxed and vice versa. And now we're at level four. Yeah, level four is what was um, given as an indicator today, going into level three. Um, mm. So yeah, that's, that's currently where we're at. Can, can it, I, are you, I, I, I was trying to get it, but I, I didn't get it properly because it, it, it time went a bit fast for me to break, break it down. When is it okay to go? Is it level one when it's ready to unlock and everything? Level, is level, no, no, well, again, no discussion about it. So level one is no threat. Literally, no threat. No threat. Um, level five, highest threat. Level, okay. Yes. So as I said, at the moment in time, we're currently level four going into level three. Mm. Um, in terms of un unlocking, you could, you could say that um, that by the mere fact that we're having a discussion and changing from an idea of going from stay at home to being more alert, then that, yes. that is an act of, of unlocking, if that makes sense. So mm. um, that's how I take um, uh, take the information that was given to CNIC. Um, but again, more clarification on that regard will come in due course. Come on, just and, and to answer your point, when when will we yeah, back be back to a state of normality? I guess, I guess if we're at level one, because that tells me there's no threat, and if there's no threat, then you know there's, there's little by way of risk. Um, whether we get to that point, I guess is the is is the question. Um, mm -hmm. And will there always be this level of underlying um, COVID in the in in our community? Um, and again, that's too too soon to answer that question. But someone just said definitely also to avoid public transport. However, many may struggle to avoid public transport in the sense that it'll be difficult for them to get around. So therefore, they, they'll end up by default still being at home because that's a difficult thing. Because especially people who work far, I can imagine driving around in London, especially mm. going to work back in the offices. I mean, mm. in some offices they are talking to people are making some demands, like say they want one desk for themselves. And it's only there is exclusively when um, most desks oh, are desk yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be it's going to be really tricky for employees to come up with plans as to how how they task this, you know. And I don't have the answers for that, quite obviously. But um, we need to really think about how we do things going down the track, regardless of what working environment you're in. You know, every every industry is going to be heavily affected with this um, until we uh, either have um, a, a very low risk of, 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 of the, the disease being in the community 
or we have a vaccination um, that can eradicate things or yeah. some, and hopefully help again reduce the risk. So th th this is going to affect everybody. Um, even in you know hospitals, we are, have to obey strict distancing rules, um, even in COVID hotspots. So, you know, nobody's falling foul. Nobody, no, nobody's not going to be falling foul from, from this. But we, yes. we obviously need plans in effect to try and ease uh, ease out of this when things are safe and it's been deemed that you know the first part of this is to try and get people safely back into the workplace the other bit now is when can i go shopping again that was that was the next one when can i go shopping again prime minister said a phase reopening of shops other than food stores and other essential outlets may begin in england on first of june at the earliest this will only happen when social distancing rules can be followed garden centers in wales will be open from monday some day our stores um, so that's another that's another of the phase which he's talking about as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's in keeping with the school yeah, discussion as well. Yes, yes. Um, I'm going to ask um, Anthony. Are you ready? I'm going to see if um, Anthony Francis. I'm going to ask Anthony Francis to to come in here. Anthony, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Thank you. Good not to see too you. Bad. Um, <laughs> Anthony, me, Doctor um, David Burton. Um, David meet Anthony Francis. How do you do? Anthony yeah. is very vocal on this subject. Very, very vocal. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, what's, your, what's your take about what the Prime Minister uh, said today? His statement. Well, I, I think that I think there's two things which you've already probably touched on. One was the um, the fact that with his message, it does leave a little bit of ambiguity between should we go in or should we stay put. Um, yeah. It says um, be alert, but he, he also st says that some people can go to work if they're able to, and that then begs the, the the sort of question: Well, those people who who are hairdressers, barbers, um, you know, other types of shops like that, do that? Do, do they take that to say, well, actually, you know, I can't work from home, therefore I can go now and open my shop, um, providing I um, employ social distancing? Is that okay? So I think it's those type of questions now that have been left a bit open and people will now be thinking, well, can I or can't I? And also, he's also mentioned about public transport, um, you know, should, should be avoided. Well, if people need to get to work, most people don't live in close proximity to their homes, which means they therefore have to take public transport. And is the system ready tomorrow at eight o'clock or seven o'clock when people need to go to be able yeah. to get volumes of potential people who may decide they want to go to work tomorrow. So what you're saying, what you're saying also is that the barber shop down the road there is going to say, well, listen, I can open up. I just tell people to stay one at a time. You stay outside there. Is, isn't that a message that has been sent? Is that what you're saying? Andrew? Well, it's a message that the prime minister has made a bit confusing by not simply saying stay put anymore and, and you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and work from home. What he is saying is if you can work, go to work. And he's sort of implied that if you're in construction and things like that, then clearly you ought to go to work. But then he's also left it open a bit ambig ambiguous and said, well, you know, if you if you can also go to work. So it, it, he's not he's now sort of created a bit of a two, two tier. Should we go in? Should we you know, sh should we stick or should we twist? And so therefore, that's why I think the other nations have remained in the same message as before, because it, it then keeps a very clear and a clear and precise message to to their to their citizens that you know it's it's work from home and not try and do this sort of hybrid version you know of of let the let people think well should I or shouldn't I should I stay or should I go David what do you take on that that perspective from Anthony so it's exactly what I'd said sort of a little mm. few moments ago the ambiguity is a is a difficult um, it's a difficult thing to face because you know that brings more confusion. I think as a starting point, though, um, it, 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 it starts a discussion as to how we um, how we best face this. Now, on an individual level, what would have been nice is to have that preemptive um, sort of discussion with businesses, um, with, with with relation to sole traders, that sort of thing to say, OK, well, look, these are the steps that should be taken in order to prepare your workplace to 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 be COVID safe. Um, mm -hmm. And and whether there's any information that will be um, gleaned tomorrow, you know, next week, I don't know. But I would expect that those things would come to fruition. But as I say, as a first starting point, it's 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 a it's a it's a, it's a suggestion 
of how we're going to go down the line. Um, yes. And, you know, we've heard in the press, I guess, in the recent weeks as to potential ways of um, navigating safe, work, safe working environments. Um, they won't be for all particular businesses, um, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a way forward. Um, and I would hope that businesses, bigger businesses, would have been able to figure out how to do that. And while people have been at home, I would hope that they've tried to figure out how they can get back to their working environment safely. Um, but it, it, it and, and I guess with with a week um, of, 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 of deliberation in regards to this statement today, again, people may well have had the ideas percolating in their mind as to how best to get back to work. Um, um, but I agree, you know, the ambiguity that, that's fallen out, out of this is, is, is going to obviously affect people in the short term. But I would hope in the long term, we would be in a position to, to sort of face these challenges. Uh, let me put this one out here for everybody. Um, uh, a commentator, health correspondent Nick Triggle said, the Prime Minister is effectively trying to pull off the impossible. He wants to try to restart normal life while keeping the virus at bay with limited means to do so. With no vaccine, the government is reliant on containing any local outbreaks. Do, do, do you think this is, uh, Anthony, do you think this is like a show to try to appease some, but playing, playing safe, playing in the middle ground, which is somewhat deemed maybe dangerous? Well, I think, I think um, Boris, or certainly his ministers, have been under a bit of pressure um, for some of their... Um, performances in terms of the messaging they've been um, saying at the daily briefings yeah. in regards to things to do with PPE and testing. They haven't been very coherent and clear. It's certainly in, in, the, in regards to actually delivering on what they say they're going to do. So I think maybe what Boris has tried to do is to say, you know, I do have a plan here because clearly there's been people calling for a plan for the last couple of weeks because yeah. we all know, as, da as David has just mentioned, we all know that we can't be in this situation forever and there has to be some sort of um, gradual process for how we get out of it but yes. whether or not this is the and I know he did mention as well this was conditional but I think even with a conditional plan it still needs to be quite specific so that people aren't um, confused by the messaging per se and I think what he's done he has outlined an overall sort of broad brush approach but I think yes. that broad brush approach perhaps has raised more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. David? Yeah. Completely agree. I mean, the, the, the thing here is that we, we need more clarity. And, and I'm, I'm hopeful that, again, going down the line, we'll get that clarity to, to better inform how we do things. The best option, as I said earlier, is that we, we really should have had this information to hand um, before um, embarking on this particular discussion today. And it's as simple as that. But we are where we are now. And I think that we have to try and, um, to, to move forward um, um, all together with this, with this particular situation. I think um, if, if it is, you know, it's been deemed that it is safe to, 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 to move in this particular direction, then we need to now think how best to, to, to get out of the situation we find ourselves in when it comes back to going to work, going to schools, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and my hope, my hope is that government will be able to lead on this um, in a very swift fashion um, to, to sort of give people the, the hope and desire to, 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 to feel safe at the end of the day. There's a lot of um, obvious fear, and obviously rightly so, fear regarding um, sort of the COVID situation. And there's got to be a lot of um, motivation to try and shift that fear um, in, 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 the, in the right manner uh, to, to sort of give people that confidence that they can to go go about their lives in a, in a similar fashion to they did pre-COVID. So I think that's the thing here. If, if, we can, if we can do that in a safe manner that's recognised by the science as well, um, uh, and acknowledging the fact that there are going to be swings to, to all of this, there are going to be very good weeks, and then there may well be a little bit of a blip. Uh, I'm hopeful not too significantly. Um, but that's the why I feel that the alert system um, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a key factor in trying to establish regionally as well regionally how how um, how we respond to to adversity so um i i expect that we'll we'll move together as one to try and to try and um, alleviate these these concerns yeah two points i wanted before a wrap up and one is this 
we are going to be driven by the science, the data, and the public health. And you just that you just mentioned that a while ago, David. Driven by the science, the data, and the public health. And it seems to be, and Anthony, you can come in at, at, at some point as well. Is is it that the science has failed us? Because the science are actually saying the scientists are actually saying they are the science, but actually the decisions are made by the government. But it seems like persons are hiding behind the science. We, you know, what, what's what's your take on on that bit there? Science. Well, okay. Well, uh, the, the, first, the first one for me is um, there's been a bit of the amb and I don't know if you've already mentioned this, David. So please forgive me, but okay. certainly regarding the you, people going to work tomorrow or those who think they should be able to go to work, do they have masks? Will will masks be given exactly. out? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. To actually, yeah. Um, be able to go to work safely. I mean, that hasn't been yeah. mentioned by Boris in his um, in his in his um, um, outline this evening. So again. That raises some concerns yeah. around the social distancing aspect. But, but, but to answer the question, um, Selborne, I think yeah. that uh, you're right. I mean, you know, we've been told about the science and the science, um, and yet right now Boris really seems to be acting in a way more to do with the economy to try and get things moving. And the science is, I'm not saying he's taken a back seat because he has actually put his five points right front and centre. So. You know they are the they are the prerequisites in which he's saying that we have to follow. But equally, he is um, in a way. I don't know if you agree, David. Leaving the door slightly ajar for people to suddenly burst through um, and take advantage of maybe the ambiguity that he's 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 he may have caused by not being so clear and specific in terms of what people should and should not do. Most definitely, I think, um, and that's we can we can talk and hash out the ambiguity issue because. It, it is, and, and people will take what they will from it. So the sooner that we get a, a clearer directive in regards to the points of concern, so you know, Bob is going back to work, having safe workspaces, um, having people, uh, you did mention it, so there's a PPE issue, you know, I'm really hot on that. So um, and how, how, how people navigate um, the world going forward. I think as soon as we get clearer indications, I think the, the thing here is I would expect um, from a government point of view, um, that the, the current government to be held to task in regards to these particular issues, um, and and so I think a clearer picture will develop um, in the short space of time um, yes. uh, from a, from a political point of view. Um, and uh, do I think that the, the science is 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 sort of taking a back seat? Um, I mean, that's the thing. We'll we'll learn more going down the line but if it is mm. that the science advisors feel that this is um is a safer period upon which we can now look to change things that's the key as well and uh, i've heard little from um from the scientific community to suggest that uh that there isn't a there, there is a big problem at this moment in time that there are bigger problems at this moment in time than there were weeks ago the transition is that fewer people are unfortunately losing their lives but I, I, I do take this, the, the viewpoint that we need to make sure that we're in union, that we are generally happy that, that, that we are embarking on a safer approach to, to the way that we're doing mm -hmm. things. And the big thing for me is the infrastructure to make sure that we're, we have the required PPE, we have the required um, contact tracers, we have the required number of, uh, or in fact, the targeted test is the bigger thing than the, the actual number of tests that are being uh, undertaken. But those things have to be, um, set in stone. So I want to see the 18,000 people available now for for, for, for for community tracing, not in, in a week or so's time. I want to have those things right now so that we yes. as, a, as a nation can feel a lot more positive going forward um, in regards to um, uh, be, uh, going back to sort of social normality. Well, being, being an effective host, as I, as I would consider myself to be, there has been some colleges of failure at the same time, Anthony, I mean, the Department of Health has confirmed 50,000 coronavirus test samples were sent to the US earlier this week after problems in UK laboratories. Then also 400,000 PPE or some, um, um, what do you call it, gowns were not up to standard. Is, is that what, Anthony? I mean, these are not science. These are not logistics things. These are a management issue, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think, I think David, obviously, you know, that's also one of my one of my bugbears, David. The PPE. I mean, you're you're right. The, the PPE the PPE issue isn't science. That's just basic logistics. 
and management together with the ventilators that I understand as well that were out of date um, that the government did stockpile but couldn't use uh, together mm -hmm. with syringes. So clearly there's, you know, the government have actually maybe just been behind the ball on this in terms of maybe acting proactively when maybe they could have looked at some of these things earlier. The sad thing is that that particular ship has now sailed and we are where we are and we have yes. to deal with the fallout of that um, now. And all we can do now is hope that the PPE that the um, frontline workers need is available to them now and not in two or three more weeks time because we've already had 30,000 deaths and you know 200 plus NHS professionals dying as well as carers, et cetera. What we don't want is to hear the government saying PPE is on its way that that ship has now sell we need ppe to be delivered you know on time to the point of per the point of um of need like tomorrow if it's actually running out so uh, you know yes th there's going to be another discussion around the post mortem of what went wrong and what could have done better but right now we need to make sure that ppe and that contact um uh, testing that david mentioned is actually working properly efficiently and effectively to make sure going forward we don't have any more um, lives being lost as a consequence of it. Yeah. You see, see, David, what is happening here is that you're a doctor, you operate on the field and you're getting things done. Anthony's a project manager guy who, <laughs> who looks at a bigger picture. <laughs> Complimenting each other. That's what, it is. <laughs> Very good. That? Each other. that's what it is. Yeah, well, yes, I mean, yes, at the, yes. end, the doctors are on the front line. These are the guys on the front line and they, they rely on you know, people with skill sets like myself, perhaps, to make sure that the logistics of, you know, yeah. when they need to get the equipment, it's there. They, you know, they they, they can't worry themselves about, you know, th what they can't control. You know, the government uh, are meant to have advisors yeah, yeah. who people who can control that, and that's what they're reliant on. Yeah. David, that's a fair point, well, it's isn't true, it? It's true. It's, it's, you, 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 there's, there's only so much, as, as, as Anthony has said, that we can do to try and push this issue. Um, I can come on platforms like this yeah. and talk about it um, till I'm um, brown in the face. Um, so, but it, it, essentially, it, it's, 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 it's so true that we do need more and more uh, of the of the key resources to help us do what we do. And then the the, the other part is it obviously impacts um, us going forward with regards to PPE in the community as well, and what levels of PPE people will will need to have. Um, so we just need more of it and we need it now. And I've said that from day one on your show and I've said that from day one of this whole um, disaster that, that, that it's got to be adequate levels for, for the hospitals to, to, and, and care homes to manoeuvre themselves appropriately um, to protect the patients, um, yeah. to protect the clinicians and to protect the staff. Um, and, and, and that's what's required to stop the number of people who are um, unfortunately passing away as healthcare professionals. Um, and, and also the people affected in care homes. So, uh, you know, I, I, there's, we can keep hashing over, but we've got to have a way of a solution as well. And so what I would like to say as well, that, 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 that the um, ingenuity of people on the ground to try and make um, face masks, for example, we've seen really good stories pop up across the UK of, of face masks being made by, for example, by 3D printing um, yeah. to, to try and help us shields. That's fantastic. But we need that on a bigger scale um, to, mm. to be more effective. And we also need, as, as, as Anthony said, we need the logistics to be sorted out. We don't need things to be shipped out of the UK to other countries to try and help uh, when, when, when we need the things here. We need the, stat, we need the, we need the, the kit here to help, um, to help the nation. So um, I will keep talking about it. Um, I'll, I'll, hopefully that will mean that you know, we, we get somewhere. Um, we are getting there. But we yeah. need, we need more, um, and as I say for for greater reasons for the for the wider public as well. Good, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I'm there, um, David. Uh, finally, David, before I go on to Anthony for his final words, um, on a on a count of one to ten, with ten being very good, uh, what would you count the prime minister? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, no, I'm no politician. I'm a doctor. Okay, so um, what, what would I give him? Um, he's he's given a plan and yes um, he's he's but unfortunately there's some ambiguity to that plan um i'll give him middle of the road i'll give him a five or a six how about that okay. middle of the road. and then for things to, to sort of fine tune over a couple of days as he said fine tune. you know we'll, we'll see if i can get him up to a dizzy eight depending on the next week <laughs> <laughs>
Ask me the okay. Question. Okay, so the doctor gave five slash six. Anthony. Yeah, well, I think I'm gonna have to go with, I'm gonna have to actually agree with the doctor on this one. Um, uh, and you know, again, I'm no politician, but I know I do comment. I know I do commentate on this regularly with you, uh, Selborne. But I think yes. on this occasion, I'm gonna have to go middle of the road. He did say it was conditional. He has outlined a plan of sorts. Yes, there's some grey areas which we hope will be clarified when he speaks in the house tomorrow, which he said he would provide some further detail. Let's wait to see what he says, and if that detail is provided, along with guidance for companies such as barbers and other um, self-employed and um, uh, small businesses to be able to work uh, um, constructively and safely, then that will be very welcomed. Okay, fantastic. So five, six, five, six. And um, I, I won't I won't put in my, my uh, I have to say the middle ground right here. Yeah. I guess I'm on the middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's good. Yeah, well, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, we, we're supposed to be a quick one, but uh, it's, it's a very interesting and uh, topic which needs to be continued as well because, you know, Anthony, one of the things that we saw, you, you looked close to me and you saw the, 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 the not the barber, but the um, car wash is open as if it's normal. It's like people were, were just going about their business, you know, and, and, and that is very concerning. But there's going to be more and, and, and go, I'm going to go over to Jamaica in Wednesday. The plan is to get the Minister of Health uh, Honorable Dr. Chris Tufton, I, I don't know if he's a doctor, but uh, Chris Tufton, to share some of the things that Jamaica is doing as well at this time, as Jamaica is now, I think, over 480 or so um, COVID-19 um, tested. Of course, that is what is tested, and certain areas of Jamaica is locked down at this time. The tourist um, trade is completely to come to a, a nil, and uh, people are suffering from an economical point of view as well. So I'm going to get him on next week. Wednesday, well, this Wednesday, uh, coming on. Hopefully, I, I'll try to see if I can even sneak David in, if anything. And um, who knows, maybe I can even sneak Anthony and say, listen, man, this is what is happening in the UK, man. What did you guys do over there? <laughs> All right. So thank you guys very much. Yeah. No thank you. Thank you. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'll just sign out now as well. So thank you very much. And those on Instagram, remember to like and share and um, stay tuned and stay close and stay safe as much as possible. And if you go to school, work tomorrow or whatever, you get a mask. It's something Anthony just said a while ago. You get a mask. Don't just, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to help out the Prime Minister. You get a mask. <laughs> don't just, just, just jump on a train or jump and go about your business as well. All right? Peace out. All the best, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, Take care. Cheers.